Hello everybody, um, this is student Dave again, uh, and today we're going to talk about Bayesian inference. Yay, yay, who looks smile on the face that kind of looks like the Joker unintentionally, but whatever. And here's the equation we are working with. This is what was in the last video, and it's using Bayesian inference. And again, let's just repeat what we have here. We have our goal, which is to say, given the data, what is the likely state of the world, or our hypothesis. And... Um, what we have before is we have, we, to get that, we multiply our prior expectations, which was the probability of a hypothesis, times the probability of some data given a hypothesis, normalized by the probability of the data in general. Now, we looked at a specific example of a hipster, and let's just think about that as a, in a more general sense. We're trying to get a little more abstract here so we can talk about distributions. And so, what we were doing there is, well, we have some estimate of the state of the world. We were drunk. We're walking around, we see a person, and we're estimating their state, that we think they're a hipster or they're not. And without data, without anything, without seeing whether or not they're carrying a PBR can, we have some estimate about the probability of them being a hipster. We have a state estimate. The estimate was probably around like 60%, I think. But as soon as we got data, we were able to improve our estimate, because we have new, we have data, we have a prior, we combine them, and we get a new estimate. And that was for basically a specific instance, but you could do that repetitively, maybe get more and more data, maybe see that they have skinny jeans on, or they maybe they have an ironic t-shirt like we said, and so you could iteratively improve your estimate of what you think the state of the world is. And so what we're going to look at is a, that's called iterative Bayes or a recursive Bayesian filter, and we're going to talk about uh, how that can be applied to distributions, which is the most general case here of Bayes, and allow us to do a lot more cooler things, and we'll talk about example afterwards. Okay, so um, so what so what do they mean by distributions? Well, let's look at the first this first one, the prior, right? Well, let's draw a curve, and here we're going to say this is all possible hypotheses, um, all possible beliefs you can have about a particular thing. We'll do an example in a minute, but I just want to get down the general mathematical framework. And so this is our hypothesis. Maybe you think that someone you know, like different heights you might think the person is, like five foot five, ten feet tall, you know, some very low probability, some high probability. But the point is what you're going to have is you're going to have the probability of the hypothesis and you're going to have some distribution of the probability of different hypotheses. And because this is a probability distribution, the area under the curve, also known, also mathematically represented as the integral, the area under the curve is going to equal one. So that's what a probability distribution looks like, or probability, probability density function, a PDF. And um, basically, it's a way of representing how much you believe in all possible uh, hypotheses. So let's say we're talking about heights of people. We could talk about all the different possible heights. You know, one foot's not very likely, 10 foot's not very likely, five feet, six feet, much more likely. And so that is the, all the possible states people could be in. That would be our state space. That's what they call it. This is like our state space. All different possible states. This is the space of possibilities. And the probability of each one. Okay? And so this is basically a distribution representing, again, we said your prior. Okay, so let's go over uh, the likelihood. So again, let's rewrite the function. We should always know what we're talking about. So we got the probability of the hypothesis given some data equals the prior, the probability of the hypothesis times the likelihood, the probability for given data, for data given the hypotheses over the probability of the data. Now we said the uh, prior, the probability of hypothesis can be represented as a probability distribution of overall possible beliefs or all possible states. Your, expected probability of each one and this is going to equal the sum is going to equal to one okay now the likelihood is a little bit different because normally if you wanted to represent this as a probability distribution you'd say the probability of the data given a particular hypothesis and then this distribution won't be over hypothesis but it'll be over the data and this will equal one however this is not what we're after we're after H. And so what you're really trying to build to be is the joint distribution, that is the probability of the data and the hypothesis, each specific one. And so let's go ahead and draw what that should look like. So let's say this is our hypotheses, all possible hypotheses. But over here is our data. 
this is going to be, so it's a three-dimensional plot where we have data, hypotheses, and the probability. Now, if we look at a specific hypothesis I, uh, high, or whatever, <laughs> okay, so we're going to go here and put a dot align, and let's draw the distribution over the data of the probability of that. So given a particular hypothesis I, what is the probability of the data? And it'll look like this. And this sums to 1. Because this is holding uh, the, this is over the data. This is a probability over the data. Let's look at another one. Some H, HI2 or whatever. Like this method, H1, H2. Now let's say it's a little bit more outward. And then let's do another one. Uh, and then let's make that a little bit more narrow here and then tail up. And so this is basically, each of these will equal to 1. But remember, that's not what we're after. We want to know for a specific data, a specific data I. And let's, let's draw that line. And what that curve is going to look like, maybe something like that. And so if we draw this again, we want to say the probability of a given data I over all hypotheses is going to look like, let's see, it looks something like this, for example. Now this, the important point about this is that this is not necessarily equal to 1. It is not explicitly a probability distribution. What you need to do is you need to normalize, and that's the whole point of this lower term. Well, and now we'll talk about how combining these in a second. But the point is, you have your prior, which is a probability distribution. You have your likelihood, which is not, and this is why. It's each one conditioned independently would be, but when we're looking across a, not the data space, but the hypothesis space, it doesn't necessarily sum to one. Okay, so we'll talk about how to combine this. Okay, so let's see how this, all this stuff is, is uh, interacting at as the distributions. So again, let's rewrite. We have a probability of our hypothesis given our data times the probability of our hypothesis, that is our prior, times the probability of the data given a hypothesis, data one, over the probability of the data. So let's just draw that and see what it is we're looking at. So again, what we have here is we have our hypothesis, right? This is the space of hypotheses, and we will then plot out the probability of the hypothesis, the prior. And it'll look like maybe something like this. Okay, so this is our prior. Okay. And then what we're going to do is now we're going to plot out our likelihood, or probability for a particular data, condition on hypothesis. And let's say that distribution is real tight over here and it goes like that, something like that. This is our likelihood. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply them together to create um, our posterior kind of. So we'll draw that out. Let's say it's something like this, I don't know. Let's just say that is our new probability of a hypothesis given our data. That's this. And the reason it's not exactly that yet is because all I did was multiply these two values. Let's get a different color. All I did was multiply these two values and that gave me this curve here. Okay? But like I said before, this is not a prob the likelihood is not a probability distribution. So something that's not a probability distribution times a probability distribution will not give you a probability distribution back necessarily. So you have to normalize it, and that's the whole idea here. And normally this is very hard to calculate, the probability of the data. But what you could typically do in many circumstances is just take this curve and uh, take the area underneath it and divide each point by that area to guarantee that it normalizes to uh, 1. So let's just say that red curve is normalized, and that's going to equal 1. And that's really going to equal your new probability of the hypothesis condition on the data, the data point one. Now, let's just think about this. What we talked about before is we said we had a hipster. And let's just say we run into some person and we think, oh, maybe they're a hipster and there's like a 60% chance. And then we see that they have a PBR in their hand. They're like, oh, this guy is more likely to be a hipster. It's like 80%. And then you see that he's got skinny jeans on. You're like, oh, it's like 90%. And then all of a sudden you see that he's got this shirt that says irony on it and now you're like almost 100% sure. The idea there is we can model that with Bayesian and that's what we're doing here is that once we get our new distribution, our new posterior distribution, well why can't we just now plug that in as our new prior hypothesis and update 
by including new data, data 2, this would be like skinny jeans, and then we could recalculate the posterior and then plug that get back in into the prior and just keep doing this over and over and over again until we get a tighter and tighter estimate what ultimately it'd be like this. Let me just drop that out. It'd be something like this. This is or the hypothesis and this is the probability of the hypothesis and at first we start off with something like this multiply it by our likelihood and normalize it and maybe now it looks like something like this. We take that and now plug that in as our new prior multiply it by new data, our new likelihood and then maybe it looks like this, maybe it looks like this, and maybe it becomes really narrow, and basically this particular hypothesis becomes more and more likely, hypothesis I or something like that, high, okay? And so that's the whole idea, is that you got these distributions of your prior, you got your distributions of your likelihood that's not a probability distribution, multiply them, normalize them to make them a posterior distribution, and then you plug that posterior distribution back in and iteratively do this until you're comfortable with your result. And that's the idea of Bayes, and that's the power of Bayes. It allows you to iteratively update your data. This is sometimes called uh, recursive, because you're kind of calling back onto the function itself. Recursive um, Bayesian filter. Because basically you're filtering out all the, you know, you're approximating over and over again and filtering out uh, background noise towards your state. That's one way of understanding it. But yeah, and now we'll talk about an example.